డిజిటల్ జర్నలిజం యొక్క కొత్త యుగంలో సవాళ్లపై డిజిటల్ మీడియా జర్నలిస్టుల కోసం మే పదమూడవ తేదీన సైబరాబాద్ సిపి స్టీఫెన్ రవీంద్ర వర్క్ షాప్ నిర్వహించారు అయితే న్యూ ఏజ్ డిజిటల్ జర్నలిజం కోసం ప్రెస్ నోట్ అలాగే సవాళ్లు పదమూడు ఎండ్ ఆఫ్ ఫౌండేషన్ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ పోలీస్ సెంటర్ ఆఫ్ కలెక్షన్ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ పోలీస్ సెంటర్ ఆఫ్ ఎలక్షన్స్ ఫర్ సైబర్ సేఫ్టీ సొసైటీతో కలిసి సైబరాబాద్ పోలీస్ కమిషనరేట్లో సైబరాబాద్ పోలీసులు డిజిటల్ జర్నలిజం యొక్క కొత్త యుగంలో సవాళ్లపై డిజిటల్ మీడియా జర్నలిస్టుల కోసం మే పదమూడవ తేదీన వర్క్ షాప్ నిర్వహించారు If there is anything that upholds the democracy, it is journalism. Journalism is the bridge between society and government. Journalism, I, I will draw a simple analogy. Journalism is the bridge between the society, which comprises of citizens, and the government. When I said a bridge, it must stand on some pillars. What are those pillars? the pillars for this bridge are public interest first important pillar public interest second one accountability integrity and there are many rest of the things but the first and foremost thing that happens to be very significant is the pillar of public interest now let us try to understand the journalism with aspect to this pillar there are so many citizen journalists that are coming apart from the mainstream journalists there are so many mainstream journalists and there are also a couple of you know few upcoming journalists right by the virtue of the article of you know you are conferred with the right but what needs to be kept in mind is anything you write and report must be with respect to the public interest So, where do we get this public interest and all that? Digital digital means their, their uh, ability to go digital is still hampered because if they are strongly tethered to the print. The orientation is only towards the print, which has got a 24-hour news cycle, whereas the digital it is just within seconds. As a result, what is happening is, while we are expected to verify, check, cross-check, verify, re-verify and all these things, the digital journalists or the YouTube journalists or viewer journalists, whatever name we give, he just goes and shares it on your Twitter courtesy this instrument. And another biggest problem is that sort of a linear communication which we had in the earlier times, now it is a horizontal spread of communication. Everybody hits the forward button and he shares I have, let us say, 15,000 people following me on my Twitter. I share this information to 15,000 people and that goes, multiplies and it spreads in the society. So this horizontal level of communication has another facet, the monetization. If I am a YouTuber, I may be making money also. Because if I make a video out of it and watch if I am, if I fulfill the conditions of the YouTube, of having 4,000 man hour watch hours and 1,000 followers for my YouTube channel, I get advertisements list automatically by the algorithm and I get my revenue out of it. So, if I am an irresponsible digital journalist, I get money for trading on foods also. I may be doing that unknowingly. Mistakes do happen. We do understand that, you know, Journalists make mistakes, but if it is a... Hey, good morning to all of you. Uh, well, it's a great privilege to be in this uh, auditorium today and discuss about the you know, aspects of digital uh, journalism that we have concentrated with today. Uh, I welcome to Uh, all of you, uh, thanks to Ami for calling me today and uh, Mr. Stephen Ravindra, my colleague and uh, a good friend in Chino Authority and also from Cyber Security uh, representative here and uh, all the journalists from various media present in this portfolio. You know, first of all, uh, when I was asked to 
So after all this, I said, I am not the right person. So I belong to, as you might say, different era. I am a print journalist with uh, 40 years experience in the field. So when uh, I uh, came into the 20 years of my career, I thought the you know, by around this time, I be well known. Law enforcement and digital media, we share an enormous responsibility to address this problem head on. And it is our duty to ensure the integrity of the truth. Let us start by clarifying what these terms mean. Misinformation refers to the spread of false information without harmful intent. It's just an accidental falsehood. Disinformation, on the other hand, is a deliberate creation and sharing of information known to be false with an intent to deceive or cause harm. This is deliberate falsehood. Malinformation information is the dissemination of genuine information with the intent to cause harm. It involves sharing of facts and data out of context to serve a harmful agenda. Now, from a law enforcement perspective, each of these phenomena poses unique challenges which have a bearing on the law and order. We are often the first responders to the social and communal unrest by these harmful practices and thus it is imperative that we are equipped with the skills and tools to combat them effectively. In the digital age, we are inundated with a flood of information, and amidst this deluge, it is often difficult to distinguish between what is real and what is not. Now, in understanding this challenge, researchers have identified seven common forms of information disorder. First is satire or parody. This is no intention to cause harm but has a potential to fool you. This form includes humorous or exaggerated content that can be misinterpreted or misrepresented as factual information especially when shared without the original satirical content. For example, a satirical website posts as an article claiming that Hyderabad's charna is sold to a billionaire. If shared without a satirical context, some people might mistake it to be a real news. Second one is the false connection. When headlines, visuals and captions don't support the content, like content 